Hey there friends, Katie here from Shangri-La Gardens. Since you're not able to come to us, we wanted to come to you. This week is a very special week for us out here at Shangri-La, as well as many others all across the world. It's Earth Week. Now, some of you who've been to Shangri-La know that we usually do our EcoFest and then have a beautiful butterfly release. But since we're not able to do that this year, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what Earth Week is, what Earth Day is, and I want to show you a way that you can be a good steward to your environment. So the 1970s were super important for environmental issues in the U.S. Many of our most impactful environmental laws were passed in the 70s, the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, and it was a time within the country that people started to learn more uh, environmental issues and to take action to protect the environment. So the idea for Earth Day started in Wisconsin with Senator Gaylord Nelson as a way to blend activism with emerging knowledge about environmental issues. So quickly the idea of Earth Day spread nationally, which inspired millions of Americans to demonstrate and show their support for environmental health. After such support, the environmental the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, I'm sure you've heard of that, was formed to develop national environmental protection laws like the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act, as I mentioned before. So in 1990, Earth Day shifted to a global scale, inspiring over 200 million people, bringing new light to environmental issues in countries all across the world. Today, Earth Day, Earth Day is the largest non-religious observance in the world with over a billion people participating in environmental awareness demonstrations and other activities events to showcase support for our world's environmental health. So follow me over here and we're gonna learn one way that we can be good stewards to our planet. Today I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. So step number one is to gather our materials. And in order to make this t-shirt bag, we need to get an old t-shirt. Now, the bigger the t-shirt, the better. So ask your adult if they have an old one that you can have. The second thing we need to get are some good scissors. These scissors should be able to cut fabric fairly easily. Now adults, if you're gonna make these bags and you have a rotary cutter and a cutting mat, you might decide to use that because it's even quicker. But scissors work just as easy and adults, this is a great way for our students to practice their tactile and cutting skills. So step two, once we have our t-shirt, we wanna turn it inside out. This way, when we make our ties later, you'll see they'll be on the inside. Now, if you want your ties to create a fringe on the bottom of your bag, then you would leave your shirt turned right side out. Step three, we wanna use our scissors and we wanna cut off the sleeves and around the neck of our t-shirt. Step four, we need to cut fringe into the bottom of our t-shirt. Now when we cut our fringe, it should be about an inch wide and about two inches long. Step five, now we need to take the fringe strips that we cut and tie them together. You can just use a basic square knot like you would to make a knot that's gonna not come undone and you just tie them, two of them together, all along the bottom of your t-shirt. Now adults, this is a great skill for your student to practice, both with gen just general knot tying, but also tactile function. Now you may have a weird third string on the outside edges of your t-shirt, that's okay, just tie it into the ends of, some, of one of the pieces you've already tied. That'll seal the corners on your bag. All right, step six. Turn your t-shirt bag inside out and get ready to use it. Now, students, if your adult loans you their good fabric scissors, make sure that you remember to return them. Don't be like Katie, who borrowed Nana's scissors seven years ago, and every time she needs them, she still calls to remind me that I have them. Now that we have our t-shirt bag complete, what can we use it for? Oh, I'm glad you asked. 
you could take it to the grocery store. Look at all these heavy items you can put into one t-shirt bag. See you later. Oh man, I forgot my backpack again. <gasps> Good thing I have this t-shirt bag. I can put all my school books in it. Okay, so you don't do the grocery shopping and you always remember your backpack? This can be used as a sack to pick up and carry all the treasures you might find outside on a nature hike. Look at all these cool things that fit in here. Oh man, that was nice not having all those things stuffed in my pockets. All right, friends, if you didn't like any of those other ideas to use your t-shirt bag for something, you can always turn it back into a t-shirt. Looks pretty cool, right? No? You don't like it? All right. So now you know one small thing that you can do to be a better suit of your environment. Not only can you get rid of all those extra t-shirts you have laying around, but you turn them into something useful. On average, the world uses 100 billion plastic bags a year and the average U.S. household uses 1,500 plastic bags a year. And if you're from Orange, Texas, I know you've seen all that litter along our roadways, and a lot of it is plastic bags. So here's what I challenge you. There are two challenges this time. One is for you adults, and that is to re make a t-shirt bag and take it with you to the grocery store and use it. Students, your challenge is to make you a t-shirt bag Go outside and go on a nature hike. Collect all the cool things you see and put them in your t-shirt bag as a holder for your treasures. All right, we miss you. We're proud of you. Stay curious.